back then to the question as to whether or not off-roaders are quite as safe as we think they are. We merrily trundle along in our 4x4s, towering above the, the traffic around us, quite happy in the belief that we're perfectly safe in our tough, mobile fortress. But riding so high, are we actually as safe as we think we are? American figures would suggest not. In fact, you might be just one swerve away from disaster. Despite the fact that when a car collides with a 4x4, you're better off in the 4x4, overall, the death rate in off-roaders, or SUVs as the Americans class them, is worse than for ordinary cars. So how can that be? Well, American statistics show that SUVs are more likely to roll over than ordinary cars. Surprisingly, there isn't a reliable test to measure a car's tendency to topple. There are standard tests involving a variety of turns and circles, but it's not clear how they relate to real-life situations. Manufacturers still rely heavily on the gut feel of experienced testers to check for stability. The American Road Safety Agency has an index to predict how likely a 4x4 is to roll over. It's based on the height of the car's centre of gravity and the car's track, the distance between the wheels. They rate cars from one to five stars. The more, the better. The American versions of Toyota's RAV4 and Honda's CRV get three stars, and the US Jeep Grand Cherokee gets two. But these ratings don't take into account important variables such as the softness of the suspension or the stickiness of the tyres. So what does it take to roll a typical 4x4? What does it take to turn a motorway journey into a whirling white line nightmare? Well, of course, it's possible to roll any car, whether it's a 4x4 or not. If you hit a ditch or a kerb at the wrong speed, the wrong angle, you're going to go over. But there is one place where a car and a 4x4 react very differently, on a nice piece of flat tarmac. Imagine you're cruising down the motorway, 70 miles an hour, suddenly the car in front brakes. You swear one way, you swear the other, and however good a driver you are, with no stability control, you're going to spin out. And as long as you don't hit anything, you'll come to a perfectly harmless standstill, a bit shaken maybe. And even when I drove the saloon faster and faster, all it would do was spin. <laughs> so, what would happen if you're in a 4x4? Four four? To find out, we bought this ordinary Range Rover. Quite an old one, but there are many on the second-hand market. We hired specialists to equip it with a rollover cage, racing seat, full safety harness, safety fuel tank, and, to give you a driver's eye view, a shock-resistant camera. We also brought in a professional stunt driver, Julian Spencer, who, with a few basic precautions, was prepared to put our 4x4 to the test. <laughs> And, as even we didn't know ourselves what was going to happen, we had an ambulance and a fire crew on standby, just in case. Again, a simple motorway simulation, but now at just 45 miles an hour. Suddenly, the car will break and the 4x4 will need to swerve to avoid a rear-end impact. Tiff had found it impossible to roll the car, but our stunt driver found it easy to roll the 4x4. And remember, this is at only 45 miles an hour. Imagine what would have happened if Julian had been doing 70. For Julian, it was just another day in the office. For 4x4 drivers, a shocking image of what might be.
If it hadn't been for the rollover cage, the damage would have been even worse. But of course, the latest 4x4s have come a long way since this old Range Rover. The latest Range Rover has air suspension that lowers the car and its centre of gravity at speed to improve stability. And like the new Volvo XC90, stability control to cut power or apply brakes when you're likely to get into trouble. Added to that, more car-like suspension without a separate chassis improves the handling of many 4x4s, including this BMW X5. There's even talk in the future of systems to prevent you steering too sharply for a car's equilibrium. But I'm not sure if I'd fancy that if I was heading for a tree. Plus, there are already better curtain airbags to protect passengers in rollovers and stiffer roof structures that resist rollover impacts. But whatever they've done to improve 4x4s, I still wouldn't try this sort of emergency avoidance test in any of them. Their centres of gravity are simply too high. You may think you're safer in a 4x4. Me? I'm not so sure. Of course, ours wasn't a proper scientific test, but surely that's the point. We need one.